Hello there. Welcome to the Producer Marketplace Spring Catalog Refresh Series. I'm Kitty, the User Education Coordinator for Cultivate Local Food Connections and the voice of many videos for Cultivate and the Iowa Food Co-op, where I teach and empower our community of producers, consumers, and Food Hub staff and how best to utilize the software and resources available to them. Today we'll be talking a little bit about branding and personal storytelling, which will help you write material for your producer bio, producer information, and that helps us get to know you, helps our customers get to know you, and helps foster those really personal connections that we're looking for. So for this class, just like in the previous video where I was just showing you how to get around in your producer account, where you're going to edit this information, what sort of information we're looking for, I'll be setting up a storefront for a fictional gluten-free bakery called Pink Peacock Bakery. And in the previous video, I went over the basics, like I said, of setting up that page, but I thought it might be good to set aside a dedicated video just to talk to you about how to set up or improve these sections in a way that really helps your catalog express who you are, what you sell, and will help your customers remember you. When telling your story, it can be tempting to just list the technicalities, where you are, what you produce, how you do it, but that doesn't necessarily help a consumer connect with you. There are places when you're setting up your profile to talk to technicals, but first, let's get to know you. I like to think of the following to help outline my story. Where did I start? Where am I now? And where am I going? Where did I start? Pink Peacocked Baked Goods is a sadly fictional gluten-free bakery based right here in Des Moines, Iowa, specializing in treats so delicious that your friends, family, and slightly adversarial dinner guests won't believe they could possibly be gluten-free. So that tells you a little bit about where I'm coming from, the items that I'm focusing on, and just injecting a little bit of my personal humor uh, surrounding what it's like to be a person who makes gluten-free baked goods um, into what we're talking about in this bio. Where am I now. In 2022, the Pink Peacock Bakery partnered with the Iowa Food Co-op to help expand the locally sourced gluten-free options available to co-op members. In a time where soaring retail rents make having our own storefront an impossibility, it's wonderful to have a place to build community and share feedback with folks looking for gluten-free options. Partnering with the IFC has also given me the opportunity to network with other local producers and to source new ingredients for my bakes. So here I am talking about why my bakery vends through the co-op, talking about what I like about it, that it gives me access to other local producers, that it enables me to run a business without having to deal with the overhead of a physical retail location. So just talking a little bit about why specifically I work through the IFC, which gives me, like I said, local options and a place to do business. Where am I going? So now we know your history, but how do you approach the future? What are you learning, planning, or building? Where are you headed next? For instance, in my sample bio for Pink Peacock, I close by talking about what I do outside of work, as well as something new I'm trying out and how I'm going to involve my products in the future. So that reads something like, when I'm not working in my favorite shared kitchen space, I'm working on other projects and developing new skills. This year, I'm teaching myself audio editing and nonfiction writing as I solo produce my first podcast. And I also do PR and marketing for my partner's tabletop role-playing game studio. I'm also experimenting with and learning more about vegan baking and hope to bring more vegan-friendly options to the Pink Peacock very soon. So that gives people a little bit of an idea of who I am as a person, that I like learning new things, that I'm a self-teacher, and also talking a little bit about where I want to take my business in the future, which is transitioning into learning more about plant-based baking as well as gluten free so that it gives folks an idea that you are always learning, always changing, that you are curious, and that they can expect new things from you in the future. And if you're feeling stuck, it's a good idea to look around the Meet Our Producers tab. It's a great resource to see what your peers are doing and to improve the appeal of their listings and provide customers with the info that they need to shop. And consider what elements that you find appealing about your peers' catalogs, like other people's bios, the way that they present themselves, their logos, the way they talk about their products. Think about what you like about those things and incorporate them into your own listings. We do have a lot of customers who shop through that Meet the Producers tab, so it's very important to make your listing stand out, and we find that producers who have a logo or profile image attract more attention than those who don't, and a logo or image provides both a personal touch and a memorable way for customers to find you again. If a customer can't remember your name, it's easy for them to remember your logo, so when they're just scrolling through that Meet the Producers section, there is something that they can easily remember that they can find you again. So now more than ever, there are tools for creating basic branding and marketing materials to help you get a 
to start without breaking the bank. And it's always best to hire a local design professional to help you with this process. But if you're not ready to make that jump yet, or if you're just looking for inspiration, there are sites like Canva that have limited but really nice options. They're free tools for you to play with, figure out what you're looking for, and you can build basic branding tools while you're just starting out. Um, I use Canva a lot for personal projects like my podcast, and I've created a few sample materials using the tools for this class as well. Uh, If you want a fully DIY approach, there are lots of free alternatives to more pricey design software, and there are sites like YouTube and Skillshare that have so many opportunities. If you have the time to sit down to learn how to do basic branding design for yourself, if either you want to do it yourself because you like learning new things or you want to have more control over it, um, or if you're just not quite ready to make the jump to hiring a local designer in your community, which you should do, but if for some reason you can't, then there are lots and lots of options for learning on your own, and there are tools that you can use to make little logos for yourself in the meantime. Um, I had a logo in this listing that I had made myself in just a couple of minutes in a program that I use called Krita, which is a Photoshop clone. It's a free Photoshop clone so that you don't have to pay Adobe's exorbitant software fees that I had just made in a couple of minutes just as a placeholder, but that I built for when I was doing technical writing for the, the manual for the software that we use. But let's swap it out for this one that I made in Canva. It's just a little bit more polished. It looks a little nicer. If you don't have a logo and you don't necessarily want to go through the process of creating one, which I totally get. You can use a photograph. Any high quality photograph that you feel represents you and your work will do. This can be a portrait, a photograph of your barn or your greenhouse, a photo of some of your products, um, your most adorable cow or most photogenic chicken. And it's important to be sure that the photograph is a high resolution so it's not fuzzy or pixelated. And just, just to make sure that you're presenting your best. Thanks for checking out this video on the basics of really personalizing your profile. If you want to learn more about branding and marketing, there are some videos on that topic elsewhere we're in this YouTube channel and stay tuned for the next video on this course, Product Photography 101, Tips and Tricks for Producers. Thank you for watching this installment of the Producer Marketplace Spring Catalog Refresh. Watch the next episode in the series or check out some of the other producer resources linked in the video description and check out cultivatefoodconnections.org.